during the all season, one of the most interesting, I don't know why people, enough people didn't talk about this in my opinion, but Brooklyn is, is blowing it up. So they're, they're, they're moving, and I'm blowing up. They're moving off of more pieces, right? Move Mikael Bridges. And for whatever reason, Houston out of nowhere said, Hey man, we will give you your picks back for Phoenix's picks that they got from the Kevin Durant trade um, from like last year. That, to me, was the most interesting thing I've ever seen in my life. If you're Houston, you're looking at a Brooklyn Nets team that is quite literally telling you that they're trying to punt the season away. Those picks are probably going to be as valuable as they're ever going to be at this moment. And you traded them for Phoenix Suns picks, which, in theory, the Suns are a team that are trying to be in the playoffs at bare minimum. So these picks don't have that much value, even if KD retires and goes on or he just he regresses pretty immensely over the next like year or two Devin Booker is still in his prime like he's still looking really good why would you even dare trade away Brooklyn Nets picks especially in this draft class for Phoenix Suns picks unless you have an indicator that something's going on in Phoenix <laughs> like that is the only way I'm I'm under the influence that Harden and Kevin Durant are talking and they're trying to get back to Houston, man. <laughs> Houston, Houston. Also, I want to be clear. I do think that there is an ongoing conversation that's happening behind the scenes. Also, KD didn't sign his extension either. They're saying they want to get him on a two year. I don't. I again, I think a lot of this stuff is just talk. It is not. It's too many things that are going into place that are just so happen to be coincidental for me not to believe that everyone in the league is kind of looking at Phoenix like it's it's. This is it. Like, this is the last year, and Houston is preparing for it, and I think they have some inkling of something is going to happen with KD. So you're saying not just KD, but Harden as well. I think, I think, I think Harden has already shipped it off. He's mailed it off. He's like, I just need my 35 mil. I just need to sign the two years with the Clippers, get my money, and then in the middle of this season, I'm going to do what I always do, which is get my way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Everything is like setting up for Harden to be like, I need to get out of here ASAP. And if you are the Clippers. Because oh, no, he's the only one. Kawhi is going to be He's the only out, one. Out, out, so it's like going to be on the Harden show for a while. Russ left. PG left. Kawhi ain't going to be healthy. <laughs> it's Harden. They, uh, the Clippers look like a 2017 Houston Rockets roster right now with Harden, Wings and a big who's going to set screen and roll. It's it's and you're asking what 35 year old Harden to look like he was when he was 25. Like that's effectively what's going on right now. And I just think that Harden is at a point in his career where he clearly doesn't want to do that anymore. I don't even think he has the physical capability of doing that for any extended period of time. And everything, obviously, with in the Clippers. I mean, I think if you had locked somebody up in a room with the front office and said, "Hey, would you trade any of these players for draft picks?" they would say absolutely in a heartbeat. So I think that is also on the table as well. Hmm. I think both of them, yeah. Both of them going to Houston. Both yeah. of them. <laughs> both of them. And, and that would suddenly make Houston a finals contender. Even just KD, I think, would really lift them up uh, in many different ways on that roster because they have all the supporting pieces. Yeah. They just don't have the stars. Like, that's what they're missing. I, I think, I mean, it's a lot of ifs, but the fact is, is that it wasn't that long ago that Woj did say the Rockets made a call on Kevin Durant. Yeah, like Woj, exactly. Woj, Woj did put that out there this summer around draft time. Mm -hmm. So like we know that they at least have had discussions that Houston has expressed interest. And we know James Harden's history. So, <laughs> and we also know, like, didn't Houston also have reported interests and bring Harden back? They opted not to. That was to. also a for, conversation as well, yes. Vliet, but it was at least a thought on their mind. Yes. So, and even, even with the friend Van Vliet contract, I've, I've always thought that, obviously, they had to sign Van Vliet to meet, meet the threshold to just spend a certain amount of money. Very tradable contract. He but the, now the it's a very, yes. extremely tradable yes. contract. You unload 40 plus million dollars within just one player alone. It's, it's too much coincidental things that are happening in Houston right now that makes me believe that they are very clearly trying to make a big splash coming soon. I think the KD conversation just right now makes the most sense, especially if Phoenix is like spiraling, the three-point shooting isn't falling as much. The defense is still middling to like being bad. I think Frank Vogel doesn't get enough credit for making that, I believe, like an above average defensive unit last year with Nurkic anchoring at the five and Durant having to still do like KD things defensively, that, which I think he's underrated on. But there's too, too many coincidental things in Houston that's going on right now for me not to believe that they're trying to make a, a massive splash with a, a certain player. How, how, like, what level, how bad do you think it needs to be for the Suns for 
them to actually pull the trigger on a KD deal this season. And the reason why I ask that is because I, I don't I don't think the Suns are going to be bad. I think the Suns are going to be in the playoffs. I think they're going to be a really competitive team. I think they're going to be much better this year. I love their offseason additions, the way they bolstered the team with limited room, limited assets. I think they did a really good job at that. I like their rookie, Ryan Dunnelot. He's a great defensive player. His shot looks better offensively. Their center spot, big questions there with Nurkic. You might be relying on a rookie, Oso Igadoro. Plumley stinks. Like the center spot is a real concern there. So, but like if they're the sixth seed in February, and the Rockets are saying, hey, we'll give you all of your picks back and you'll have all your flexibility back. Just just start building around Devin Booker for the future. This is your yeah. this is your way out. Is that really enough for Ishbia and the Suns to say, okay, screw it. Like we're not going to go for it anymore. We're not going to roll a dice and see if we can win it all. I just don't know like what what level of uh, you know underwhelming do the Suns need to be this year? Well, Nurk Ner- 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 is another big that's shooting threes out of nowhere i don't know that's i don't know how that's gonna work yeah, he's out gonna missing a lot of threes and miss missing quite a bit um but <laughs> i think i sure like i i think that the floor for phoenix is probably a little too high for them to panic but i don't know if it's too high for kd to panic like i think kd is like smart mm. enough to kind of realize like hey like ah, dallas still looks great Denver looks great. OKC looks borderline unbeatable. Memphis is uh, not Memphis. Minnesota is also really, really good. Like I can, you can just list off like four or five teams that are not just going to be better, but like in any situation, I don't think anybody believes that Phoenix could even beat any of these teams either. Like they're just at a significant disadvantage. And I love Tyus Jones, but I think there's a reason why he's a backup instead of a starter. Like I think that there is actual real reason behind that. And Boone Hoser is great, but I think that if they get to like the sixth seed, I still think that's enough for Katie to be like, I don't like it here. Like, I, I don't I don't want to be here. I don't really see this really mapping out and planning out. Y'all are still taxing me to play extensive minutes and do a lot of things defensively that I just don't think I should have to do at this point in my career anymore. And honestly, I think um, a mid-year, uh, uh, an average third option year from Bradley Bill could really push things a little bit more forward than I think a lot of people are anticipating. Because I, I don't think Bradley Bill, uh, yikes, I, that's a I mean, it's, it's one of the least tradable contracts in the NBA. It, it is the least tradable contract yeah. in the NBA. It's, it's got yeah. the no trade clause still attached yeah. to it.